Hey everybody, anyone who's here, and today we are going to be doing something a little different. Uh, this is aimed for all you server admins there who are adminning a, a Forge modified uh, Minecraft server. So it doesn't matter if you're using Feed the Beast, if you're using ATL Launcher, AT Launcher, ATL, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter if you're using TechIt, whatever the case is, as long as it's running Forge, this should work for you. Uh, one of the biggest problems I have as a server admin, whenever I start up a new server, and just modded servers in general, is that um, world gen always takes such a load on the server. So whenever you start generating more terrain, um, it puts a hefty, hefty load on the server. And sure, there's ways around that. You could get faster hard drives. You could run things in RAM disk, which I do not recommend, by the way, but I won't get into that today. Um, and there's a few other things to do. But what I found the easiest and best thing to do is to pre-generate the terrain. Yes, so you pre-generate your actual Minecraft world, so when your plays are out there ex uh, exploring, they're not killing the TPS, and that's what we're going to look at today, how to do that. So how we're going to do that? Right now, I am running um, Forge uh, with really the only mod that I have right now is Forge Essentials, as you can see right here. No other mods are enabled, and that's just to make it easier for me to start and stop the server. Now, Forge Essential comes with uh, multiple modules. You'll be able to get down in the description. You'll see links to the actual GitHub, uh, where you could actually look at the code, uh, the wiki, where you could actually learn how to use it, and then Jenkins. And for all of you guys who don't know what Jenkins is, Jenkins is a program uh, that will auto-build every time they update Forge. So as long as you go to Jenkins and you download the latest, you always get the latest code. So that's Forge. Within Forge, it comes with a... Uh, I'm sorry... That's Forge Essentials. Forge Essentials is pretty much a, a remake of the uh, uh, Essentials plugin for Bucket. And Forge Essentials comes with some really, really cool modules. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them today, uh, but you could check out the uh, GitHub and um, the wiki to see what modules are available. I mean, there's everything. There's economy, economy ones, um, there's backup modules, snoopers, tickets, voting modules, world control commands, lots and lots of modules. The one we are going to uh, work with today is World Border. Now, World Border is very similar to the World Border you guys are probably used to uh, either using Bucket or in single player um, and that's great and that works really really good so how are we going to do this now right now i'm in the world um and, and i'm in the world just so i could demonstrate it for you guys i recommend you do this from the console and when we actually start working on it i am going to switch over to the console but for now i just wanted to show you some things so how does world border work well world border is actually pretty simple and as you can see the commands right there you could actually use WB. You don't have to actually write the whole world border command. Uh, so as you can see, when you do world border, you have a couple uh, commands first. And again, this is all in the wiki, and you could follow along with me while reading the wiki. It's a really good idea. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is tell it what world you want to work on. Now, uh, you could use this to uh, generate terrain in any dimension. Yes, any dimension. But the dimension has to be loaded. So by default, only overworld, which is uh, uh, zero. Um, the nether, which is negative one, or the um, end, which is one. Uh, those are the only worlds uh, loaded by default. So if you wanted to do it in like a Twilight Forest world or Mistcraft or something like that, you're going to need to go into that world, either um, start a, a, a chunk loader or just be in the world so it stays loaded. So if the world's not loaded, it's not going to work. So we're going to, you can see there's a couple options there. There's global, world, and then the world ID. Um, if you do world, it's going to work in whatever world that you're in. So you cannot use this command if you're doing this from the console. If you do global, this is going to work on all worlds, which I do not recommend. And then you could specify the world ID. So we're going to specify world ID zero just so we could work on the overworld where we are right now. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you have to define, define some stuff. The first thing we need to define is how big of a radius you want the world to be. So in this case, what we're going to do is make it a 5,000 radius. Basically, what that means is 5,000 chunks that way from spawn, 5,000 chunks that way from spawn. And, um, a, a big, it, it will make it totally 10,000 chunks, uh, 5,000 plus, 5,000 minus. Great. So now we have the world border, um, how big it is. We have to tell it what shape we want it. Um, and you have, I thought there was a couple different options. Maybe there's not. I thought there was a couple different options, but you want square. 
then that's not obviously how you do square. There you go. So now we have the world border set to uh, radius 5,000, and the world border is set to a square. And then all you have to do is enable the world border. So world border zero, enable. Great. So now we have the world border enabled. We have it set to a, a radius of 5,000, and the border is a square. And if you could do a world border zero info, it will tell you all that information. Very, very cool. Now, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make this world border a little bit shorter. Uh, just quite, I can show you how it works. So let's change the world border shape. We'll make the radius 1,000. Okay, great. So now, if I fly, let's get to the closest 1,000, which would be this way. If I fly all the way, and I know I could teleport myself, but I haven't actually generated chunks, so I don't want to do that. But if I fly all the way to 1,000, once I get to Z999, if I go any further, it's going to bounce me back. Now, obviously, this is not what you're going to want, and we're going to want to disable this uh, before we go live with the server. But I did want to just show you it working, so give me a second to fly over there, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and as you can see, we're at a Z of 982. Now, if I go out to 1,000, it is just going to bounce. Oh, I'm up right now, so it's not going to bounce me back. Uh, but as you can see, oh, yeah, it is bouncing me back. There you go. So as you can see, it will not let me pass 1,000. Very, very cool. Now, obviously, in the real world, when we're ready to actually go live with this, we're going to want to disable that. Yes. Okay, so let me jump into a console where I'd prefer to do this, and we'll be right back. Before we jump into the console and I show you how to set this all up in world, in game, uh, what I do want to show you first is how to install Forge Essentials, because it's not as straightforward um, as some people might think. So right here, you'll see what I downloaded from the Jenkins. Uh, be very, pay very attention, um, special attention to what you're downloading. You want to download the server.zip. There's a couple different things uh, that you could download off the Jenkins. The server.zip is what you want. Uh, so it's first worth mentioning, you're not just going to drop this into your mods folder. It won't work that way. You're going to have to extract it first because there's a couple things that you need in here. First of all, you see a mods uh, directory. This is what you're going to put inside your mods folder. Um, you could either, you know, just copy this whole folder over to your root directory or just drop this directly into your mods folder. The second thing you're going to see here is this second folder. This is the Forge Essentials. This has its library and all the different modules. This needs to go into the root directory of your server instance. Very straightforward. Inside of here, you're going to see two folders. One is the li uh, library. All of this stuff needs to be in there. You can't remove this. But inside modules is all the different modules that come with Forge Essentials. For our purposes, I deleted all of this stuff because I don't need it. And uh, most of the time, unless you're running a, a, a huge public server, you probably won't need the rest of this stuff either. So you could just delete it. If you wanted to keep it, feel free to keep it. So boom, deleted. So now I could just copy this folder right to my uh, root directory of my uh, server instance and put this into the mod. So let's hop into the console and I could show you how everything works. Okay, here we are inside my console. Now, first thing to notice is my console probably looks a little different than your console. The reason for that is I'm using a server wrapper called Mark II. Uh, this will work no matter what console you're using. You can use just the generic um, console that comes with Minecraft. Um, you can use whatever server wrapper you want. As long as it could send commands to the console, that all is all that matters. If you actually like this console, which I really, really do like, feel free to uh, check it out. I have the link to it in my description. It's kind of dead in the sense that they're not updating it anymore to a newer version. But the reason for that is they're working on their new version of Mark II called Mark IV. But uh, there's still a, a pretty good community around Mark II. It's an open source program, so there's definitely people still doing updates to the GitHub. Um, so it's a really cool uh, server wrapper. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. So I am back. I'm at the console. Um, and as you can see, I generated a brand new world. So this is not the world that we used before. And as you can see, world border zero info. There's no world border set up. Um, this is actually just default settings. We could just disable that. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to set the world border to something really large. The reason for that is I want to show you how long this can really take because it really can take a really long time to set up. So now we have a world border set up. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. And as you can see, we have it set up for a 10,000. 
um, from the center point of zero zero zero. Now, obviously, if you wanted to world border zero center, you can actually put new coordinates here if you wanted to center it from somewhere else. You know, that would start it from 100 by 100, whatever the case is. More times, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to want to start it from 0, 0, 0. And you can see it's already set to shape to square, and the actual world border is enabled. Just if you need a reminder on how to do that, world border 0, uh, shape would be square, and enabled. Very cool, right? And now we have that all that stuff set up. So what are we going to need to do next? The next thing we need to do is actually start filling in this world. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this from a console is to show you that doing it in world is a bad idea. I mean, feel free to start it in world if you want, but this will really tax the server a lot. It will make the server go very slow, especially if you have a lot of mods installed, especially ones that do terrain generation. So you don't want to do this in game and you definitely don't want to do this on a live server. If you have people playing on the server while this is going on, they're not going to have a good time. So if you're going to do this, you're going to want to take this down for maintenance. Keep in mind the larger of a radius that you generate the longer it's going to take. And we're going to see that right now. So uh, to actually fill and generate the world, we used a filler tool. So right off the bat, we do a filler zero. And as you can see, there is no fillers running on that world. Very cool. So let's start a filler. Filler zero, start. And the filler command use, works just like uh, the world border command. So you can use zero or any different uh, dimension ID. So negative one, you can use one. Um, if you're using Twilight Forest, you can use seven. Again, you have to make sure that the world is loaded. Uh, easy way to tell if the world's loaded, just do a check of the TPS. Um, if the world was loaded, it would show up in this list. Obviously, I don't even have Twilight Forest installed, so it's not showing up on this list. Very cool. So what we want to do is filler zero start. Now, this is actually going to start the um, filler and start pre-generating terrain. I can't stress this enough. Do not do this on a live server. It's going to make it take a lot longer and the players on the server is not going to have a good time. The time to do this is before you go live with a new world or if you have the time to take down your server for a day or so. And I say a day because it does take a long time. Um, so let's get this filler started and you'll see what's going on. Okay, so we started the filler and it's telling you it's going to take 21 hours, 42 minutes and 5 seconds at its current speed. The first thing is worth mentioning is this time right here is an estimate. It takes what the current tick time is. So right now our current tick should be 20. Yeah, our current tick is 20 ticks per second. So that means at its current speed, using 20 ticks per second, it's going to take 21 hours, 42 minutes and 5 seconds. If this tick rate goes down, this number is going to increase. So how can we make this go faster? So as you can see, it gives you an update about every minute or so um, uh, of changes. Yeah, about a minute or so. And as you can see right now, the speed is going one tick, uh, one chunk per tick. And you can actually see that by doing oh, filler zero. And as you can see, it gives you that same info. To do 21 hours, 41 minutes, 10 seconds with one chunk per tick. Now it's worth mentioning, um, no, I guess it didn't. I thought it, it, the time moved up, but it hasn't yet. So how can we make this go faster? Well, we could change the speed. There you go. Uh, we could change the speed that this runs at by using the speed command. So if we used filler speed, filler zero speed two, now it's going to run at a chunk, uh, two, chunk t uh, two chunks per tick. I could talk usually. So as you can see, now it's telling you it's only going to take 10 hours and 15 minutes at two chunks per tick. Um, and let's take a look at that TPS. And the TPS is still at 20 ticks per second, but the server, uh, the mean tick time has jumped up a lot and it's going to keep jumping up. Now, it's worth mentioning I'm still running at 20 ticks per second. That's because I have no mods installed. So if I had a bunch of mods, um, biomes of plenty, um, under, um, what is it? Uh, wild caves, underground biomes, anything that has um, server generation, terrain generation, it is going to take a huge toll on this TPS. So let's make this a little faster. Let's make it some ridiculously fast speed. We're going to make it 15 chunks per second. 
So now, as you can see, it didn't actually even spit out back how, um, how long it's going to take. And I bet you the reason for that is, look at that, the chunks, the, the tick rate has dropped now to nine ticks per second. So you need to find a good balance uh, between speed and tick rate. Because right now, running this at 15 chunks per second, it sounds, uh, for a tick, it sounds like, oh, that's a great idea, you know, um, you, you're going to get five, 15 chunks per tick. Well, guess what? The, the, the ticks are actually taking half as much time, uh, double the amount of time to run. So even though uh, this is running at 15 ticks per sec, uh, 15 uh, chunks per tick, it's really only running at seven chunks per second because you're getting half the tick rate. So if we change the speed... And we'll change it to seven. It should run at about the same speed. But as you can see, this is very, very heavy on the server. So be very careful when you run this. And the rest you can do is just wait. Um, this takes a long time. It's really worth mentioning how much time this really takes. Um, even though this says 10 hours, I wouldn't be surprised if this was going to be closer to like 15, 20 hours on the Rack Pack server. I did a generation of about 10 uh, 10,000 by 10,000, and it took roughly... I want to say 20 hours, 22 hours to generate all of that. Um, I also did it in the nether too, which we could do right now. Um, you can run multiple fillers together, but you don't want to. So let's stop the filler on the overworld. So now if we do a filler zero, it's going to tell me, well, I guess no chunks are uh, running. Cool. So let's wait for the tick rate to catch back up. There we go. So let's do the same thing in the nether. Yes, very cool. So uh, we do the exact same thing we did before, world border. This time we're going to do negative one. We are going to do the radius. Um, we're going to go 5,000 this time. The reason being is obviously the nether um, is one every block in the overworld. Every block in the overworld is eight blocks in the nether. Um, so you don't really need to generate as big of a terrain as um, you did with the overworld. So we're going to do uh, 5,000. So we set that. Let's set the shape. We go shape square. Yeah, we're going to get it. Shape is square. And world border negative one enable. Very cool. So now if we do a world border negative one info. It shows us everything we just started. And if we do a filler, negative one, start. We have now started the filler. Very cool. As you can see, this has taken half the amount of time because we're using half the amount of, um, we have half the amount of radius. Very cool. So when this is all done, you're going to get a nice little message on your screen, on your console, that says filler is complete. And there's only one more thing you have to do. And the one thing you have to do, let's just turn off this filler for now is turn off the world border, unless you want to keep it. But when we play on our server, I don't want people to have to bounce back if they hit a world border. So let's go back to the um, overworld, world border, disable. Oh, and I, yeah, that, that's the overworld. And now if I do a world border zero, info, you could see the world border is disabled. Very, very cool. It's a little quick little tip and trick. Um, as I said, you can do all of this in game. You don't have to do it from a console, but I highly, highly recommend you do do it from a console. It just makes it run a little quicker um, and there's no reason to have to keep logging in and out to do all this. Very cool. If you have any questions about this, um, any suggestions on how this could be run better, anything like that, please let me know. Uh, leave a comment down there. Like I said, all the links that I talked about to Mark II, to Forge Essentials, to the Wiki, to the um, GitHub, everything is going to be down in the description. So check it out. This is a really cool way for you to make the world, make your player's experience just that much better. Because one of the best things to do in Minecraft, especially in modded, is explore. And nobody wants lag while they explore. So this is how you fix it. As always, thanks for watching, and I'm out.